Greater Refuge Temple every Sunday morning for Sunday morning worship. This world will not end by COVID-19. I wish I had a church in here. Don't let anyone cause you to lose faith in God. From the water, He lifted me. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. You would have been in a nut house someplace trying to keep up with that. Thank God you got a free in the Holy Spirit, enjoying the greatest freedom of all. The Lord has been good. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I praise and thank God for the doors that God closed just as well as the doors that God has opened. 11 a.m. Streaming live from Facebook. Catch us on YouTube, greaterrefugetemple.org. Oh, God, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, that same God who is immutable, unchangeable, he cannot change. I heard the word of the prophet, and the fire of God fell. There's some of us in here that realize that if it had not been, Remember, those who pray can expect a miracle. Bishop Charles E. Wright, Senior Pastor. Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., Assistant Pastor. You are tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. We greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. And we thank him for another opportunity we have to praise and to bless him Hallelujah. in the beauty of holiness. As our praise team is sung and blessed us and encouraged us to praise him. All glory and all honor belongs to him. He's kept us another week. It's by his grace that we are here. You may praise him. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All the glory and all the honor belongs to Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank him again as we begin our service. We'll ask that you would stand with us really again as our minister Lawrence will come and Kevin Lawrence and he will lead us in prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Following the prayer, we'll be led, given our scripture rather, by uh, Minister Peter Lenton, Minister Lawrence. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for see another Sunday, Lord God. We didn't have to wake up, but you woke us up this morning. You allow us to see, Lord God. You allowed us to see a new day, Lord God. You allowed us to be here another Sunday, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for food on our table, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God, for our health and strength, Lord God. If it wasn't for you, Lord God, where would we be at, Lord God? Oh, God, we are grateful here, Lord God. Oh, God, we are excited here, Lord God. Oh, God, we can't wait to be here in the house of the Lord God. We thank you, oh, God, for having life, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God, for having a job, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God, for having shoes on our feet, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God, for having the socks on our feet, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God, for having a mother and a father, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, Lord God. We ask your God to anoint this service, Lord God. We ask your God to bless our speaker, Lord God. We ask your God to move in the mountains, Lord God. We ask your God to send your anointing down right now, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Oh God, during this pandemic, Lord God, we ask your God, Lord God, to put joy in our heart, Lord God. Peace in our mind, Lord God. We're going to continue to love you, Lord God. We're going to continue to worship you, Lord God. We're going to continue to jump for joy, Lord God. Because you're the most high God, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. 
In Jesus' name I pray. And let God, all God's beautiful children say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Our scripture reading will be taken from this morning. Matthew chapter 24. Reading from verse 1 to verse 6. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the word of the Lord reads. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciple came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things, verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us. When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and, then, and shall deceive many. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that, be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the hand is not yet. Here hand the reading of God's holy word. It sanctifies your heart that you may grow and live thereby in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Lord, heal the land. I said, turn to your other neighbor and say, Lord, heal the land. Hallelujah. Everybody clap your hands, yeah. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If my people who are called by my name yeah. will humble themselves and pray, God.
listen. Yes, sir. We will look to the hills. Oh, yeah. Someone's coming for our help. I said it would.
praise him. Give the Lord a hand praise. Thank him. Hallelujah. Thanking him for another opportunity. For the blessings of God to fall. Hallelujah. Send the Pentecost. We thank God for all of his blessings unto us. For the spirit of hopefulness that's in this place today. Oh yeah, we're looking for God to bless. He has showed up already. Uh, he's going to continue to bless. Keep the spirit of Pentecost alive. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. We praise and thank God for his blessings. For this great opportunity. It's a wonderful thing to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. When so much else is going on, contrary to the word of God, thank God that you're here with us today. And we thank God for those who are worshiping with us via television or some other means. Thank God for you joining in praise and magnifying the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving him back praise and thanks for what he has done. He has kept us another week. Dangers seen and unseen. Uh, when the enemy tried to destroy us, the Lord stopped it. Hallelujah. Thank him for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am so grateful to be a child of God. Uh, baptized in his name and filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And thank God for the hope that we all share. One day we will see him. Hallelujah. When he comes right in the sky. Jesus Christ our Lord and our King. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank everyone that's here today. For those in our television land uh, viewing us, worshiping with us. I want to thank all of you for, for your support. Thank you for sharing your tithes and offerings here at Greater Refuge Simple Church. Uh, you blessed us and helped us to keep the work of the Lord going on. We might worship him in comfort in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Greater Refuge Temple service coming to you from, hallelujah, Greater Refuge Temple, 2081 Adam C. Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York 10027. Here in the village of Harlem, we worship the Lord in the spirit of holiness, and we thank him for all things. And as you worship us, hallelujah, today we've come to that part of our service when all of us can participate. We can share in giving of our tithes and our offerings. Why don't you do that? Uh, take your device that you're going to use, use Giblify, uh, to worship by giving. And those who are here in the temple, we ask that you prepare to give. And to those who would like to mail their uh, offerings and tithes in here to the address I mentioned before, make checks payable to Greater Refuge Temple. And the address again, 2081 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10037. And the Lord will bless you real good as you help to keep his work going on in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many out there who need to hear God's word. And to be encouraged, hallelujah, those who have heard before, in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, so give for the work of the Lord. Prepare to give in Jesus' name as we all take our offerings in our hands and prepare to give to him with thanksgiving. Uh, the word of the Lord says, Give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, running over, shall men give into your bosom. Hallelujah. As you give, he will give back to you. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. I'm a living witness. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how you try. So keep on giving to him. Keep on blessing his name. And he will bless you back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we take our tithes and our offerings in our hands, bow our heads in prayer and consecration. Dear God, we come before you. And we thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for blessing us, oh God, to be able to earn our wages, to have a job. And Lord, we give back to you our tithes and our offerings with thanksgiving. Thank you again, Lord. Thank you again. Bless each and every one of your children as they give, Lord. Some through Givelify and others 
through the service of God who are here with us today in person. And we ask that you bless in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both the gift and Lord bless the giver. We pray and we ask in Jesus' name. Let all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. The ushers will serve at this time. Please give in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a praise. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. We magnify him today. Thank you for giving in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving uh, to the house of God here at Greater Refuge Temple. May the Lord continue to bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Savior and our God. On the first Saturday, the 6th of uh, November... There will be a memorial service held here at 2 o'clock for our precious Mother Dorothy Anderson, missionary president for a number of years, precious child of God, who served this church over three, over three score years. Uh, we all who have been here have enjoyed and been blessed 
through her service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to Greater Refuge Temple. And she served also nationally as the Women's Council President for at least, I know, one term. We remember her so very much and we thank God for her contributions to Greater Refuge Temple Church. Someone who's gone home to be with the Lord and she would lead that song about over there and she's over there now on the bright side of the mountain yes, yes. worshiping and praising our God who blessed her to serve so well. That memorial service on the 6th of November will be here from 2 o'clock until 4 and we ask that you would uh, watch it as it will be uh, telecast, live streamed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the number of people who have been invited by family, family has invited a number of people uh, locally and nationally, uh, we ask that everyone else would just view it uh, via our website, Greater Refuge Temple website and our in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, same way you worship on Sunday mornings, those who are uh, who watch us, uh, she is deserving of this honor as the honored uh, former Mayor D uh, Dinkins, uh, someone who served the city. So we will honor the memory of Mother Dorothy Anderson, missionary par excellence in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's Sunday. 6th of uh, November, 2 o'clock until 4 o'clock. Only those who have been invited will be attending in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you. We are ready now for the final selection by our praise team. Thank God for them. They have been singing continuously. For the long period of time that we were out of the church, uh, they were here uh, with us singing, praising God as we taped our services. So we thank you, Sister Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson and uh, Minister Ernest Billups and all of the musicians and praise team workers, the A and the B team. May the Lord bless you. Our final selection by our praise team and the next voice you will hear. Following them will be that of our assistant pastor, Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., who will bring us the word of God. I'll praise to you. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody just glad to be alive on this morning? I said, anybody just glad to be alive on this morning? Listen, if we would just take the next 20 seconds, come on with uplifting hands as a sign of surrender on this morning. And I dare you begin to just thank God for being alive. But this is not an accident. That's the message this morning. But this is not an accident that you're alive and there is more. Come on. I need you to saturate the atmosphere with your words of worship. Come on, praise him. Saturate the atmosphere with your words of praise. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah. Lord, we bless your name, God. I'm alive, yeah. Because this morning, God knows the plan. He has for me. He knows the thoughts. He thinks towards me. And nothing is an accident. I'm alive. Because this morning, help me say, God knows the plan. He has. As for me, he knows the thoughts, he thinks for me, and nothing is an answer. I'm alive. I'm alive. Because there's more. Anybody believe that right there? Anybody, anybody can testify something to that right there? Come on, I need y'all to say it this morning, declare it. I'ma say. God knows the plan He has for me He knows the thought He thinks towards me And nothing is an accident Cause I'm alive Come on, say it again God knows the 
God knows the plan He has for me. He knows the thought He thinks towards me. And nothing is Hallelujah. One more time. God knows. God knows the plan. He has for me. He knows the thoughts. He thinks towards me. And nothing is in the accident. Cause I'm alive. Come on, say. Cause I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. There's a reason I'm still standing here. Yeah. Come on, team. I'm alive, I'm alive because there's more. Because there's more. Say, I'm alive. I'm alive. Come on, that's I'm it. Alive. Can anybody testify alive. that you're still alive? I'm alive. And this is not an accident. I'm alive. Yes, God. He didn't let me die. There's a reason I'm in oh, And this is not an accident. I'm alive. Come on, say it again. He didn't let me die. Let me die. Let me die. Let me die. There's a reason I'm in And this is not the end. And this is not, not the end. end. God has not more for end. you. Walk not in your purpose. End. Walk in your not destiny. Because this is not, it's not an accident. An accident. Listen, I feel this. Because there is more. There is more. I can't get just come on if it ask him. Open your mouth. Come on if it ask him. Come on if you're glad to be alive. Come on if it's nothing but a thank you to the Lord on this morning. God, thank you for keeping me, God. Thank you for breath in my body, God. Thank you for the purpose that you have in me, God. Come on, that's it. Open your mouth if it ask him. Oh, yeah. Come on, that's it. Hallelujah. There's a reason why you're here, son of a There's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're here. There's a reason. There's purpose. There's purpose. Come on, say it. I'm alive. I'm alive.
on what God has called us to do. Anybody believe that right there? Listen, we all experienced this pandemic. We all lost loved ones. There were some families, families, meaning three or four people, families wiped out. But we're still here. Y'all ain't singing nothing to me this morning. So just like Bishop said last week, the praise team, we came to encourage you all this morning to don't sit. Don't just sit there, but get up. As Bishop Wright would say, stand flat-footed and walk in your purpose. Walk in your destiny. Walk into your calling. There's more for you, whatever it is. Come on, somebody just say, there's more. Come on, somebody say, there's more. I don't know whatever it is that God called you to do, but there's more. And we ain't got no time to sit down here and just sit on it because, because there's more. Somebody said, there's more. Somebody said, there's more. Somebody say, there's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Yeah. There's more. And I am not. Come on, praise him. Your spirit right there. Come on, I'm alive. I'm alive. I don't want to rock the cry out in my place. I'm alive. I'm alive. Yeah. Oh. Come on. I'm alive. Come on, let's go up. Say, I'm alive. I'm alive. Because him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let me get more on these monitors. Come on, let's worship the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.
because there's more. Talk to yourself. Say, I am not an accident. I'm alive because there's more. Talk to yourself. And I am not an accident. Tell the devil. This is not an accident. This is not an accident. I'm alive because there's more. This is not an accident. I'm alive because there's more. Because there's more. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, the devil wants you to believe, amen, that your life was an accident. Perhaps you weren't treated correctly when you were a young child, or perhaps people have spoken down to you throughout your life. And the devil starts at an early age, amen, he tries to uh, destroy us at an early age. But I want you to know that you are not an accident. You are alive because God has something more for you. Hallelujah. You are not an accident because God has more. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, we thank you now and we praise you. We love and we adore you, God. God, we thank you for this day because this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it, Father. We thank you now for my brothers and sisters, God, who are here with us today, God, to worship and to lift you up. God, if the enemy would have had his way, he would have destroyed us a long time ago. God, but we thank you, God, for your blood. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your arms of safety, God. God, we ask you now, Lord God, to anoint us afresh. God, we ask right now that you would have thine own way in our lives. Speak a word of life and a word of victory, a word of healing and a word of deliverance, God. By anything that would hinder the preacher or the hearer in the name of Jesus Christ. God, touch those who are sick and shut in. Oh, God, we ask you to touch Brother Chesley right now. Lord God, we ask you to raise him up in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, touch all of the saints, God, who are struggling right now. Touch them right now as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go with us to Philippians chapter number four, familiar passage of scripture. I uh, certainly do want to honor the spirit of God that is in this house. Amen. And we do honor the presence of our pastor, Bishop Charles Wright, and to Mother Wright, and to my wife. Amen. Uh, Lady Sarah, we praise and thank God for her. We praise and thank God for our missionary president, Missionary Janice Johnson, and Mother Kennan, and to all of the uh, my clergy brethren in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We praise and thank God for you. Amen. All that God is doing in our lives. Amen. We're going to Philippians chapter number four. And I want to warn you on this morning that this morning's message is a bit different, um, but I want you to stick with me. I believe that God is going to take us somewhere in this message. Philippians chapter number four, beginning at verse number four, it reads on this wise, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderations be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. That word careful can also be translated. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mine through Christ Jesus. 
Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which I have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Do, and the God of peace shall be with you. I want to talk to you on today from the thought, spiritual tools to, for overcoming anxiety. Spiritual tools for overcoming anxiety. Uh, I must be honest with you, uh, the Lord pressed this message in my spirit uh, and kind of impregnated me with this message on this morning. I believe that it may not be for everyone, but I do believe it's for someone. You know, this month uh, is, uh, October is always a very lively month because there's a lot of activity uh, in the month of October. A lot of uh, important things that happen in the month of October. Uh, certainly one of those important things is the birth month of our First Lady, amen, Mother Wright. Uh, but it is also uh, cancer Awareness Month. Uh, can I, uh, should, should I say Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but as a church, we typically uh, use it as a Cancer Awareness Month. And I'm going to ask those of you who have uh, been stricken with cancer and the Lord uh, has delivered you and you're here today, even though you had a bout of cancer, will you just stand to your feet, if you will, so that we can celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? Look at, God bless you. God bless you. Look at these individuals in which God has blessed. God bless you. Look at them, two together. God bless you. Look at Mother Jenkins. God bless you. Our pastor, come on here. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. God is a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. I see some folks on the balcony there. God bless you. We see you. Amen. All of you who God has done a marvelous thing. And every year we celebrate uh, the work of God in the life of uh, the believer. Amen. And as you can see from uh, the people who stood up today, uh, that there is no respecter of person. Uh, it will hit the pulpit just as well as it will hit the pews. And so, amen. Along with uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it is also clergy, uh, clergy Appreciation Month, a month where we appreciate all of our clergy. I want all of the clergy in the house, if you would stand, amen. And I want our congregation to give a rousing applause to all of the clergy for the hard work that they do at Refuge Temple. Amen. God bless you. For those who are here and those who are abroad, we celebrate you. My brothers, amen. God bless you. We celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, along with uh, Clergy Appreciation Month and Breast Cancer or Cancer Awareness Month, it is also um, Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, and I have been doing quite a bit of study on mental health awareness because uh, I do believe that it is something that uh, the church hasn't shown her best face. And when I mean the church, I never mean Refuge Temple. I'm always talking about the church world. Amen. Uh, the church world has not done the greatest job in many cases in making sure that we are mentally healthy. Uh, and, and um, um, you know, it's important that we not only focus on uh, the other parts of the body, but we also focus on every aspect of who we are. I promise you, if you pray with me, I'm going somewhere. Amen. Romans chapter number 12, beginning at verse number 1, it reads on this wise, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
Amen. The Bible lets us know that we're not just serving God in one area, but we serve God with our minds. We serve God with our hearts. We serve God with our bodies and we serve God with our emotion. Uh, all of us, all of us, every possible being of us must be in worship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I would like to tell you that I think that we have mastered some pieces, but I'm concerned about the rest. I think that we do a very good job in the emotional aspect of it. Amen. When we come to church, amen, uh, the emotional aspect oftentimes uh, uh, is, is highly exalted. You know, when, 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 when you get a song like uh, we heard earlier, Heal the Land, amen, uh, uh, and, and, and we think about all the uh, areas in the land that needs to be healed, we can't help but celebrate. Uh, but, but, but what I have come to notice, I have been preaching uh, since the age of 19 years of age. Amen. And, and, and I have been uh, in youth ministry and, and now in adult ministry as assistant pastor of this great church in which I'm honored to be. Amen. But, but, but I have noticed that we hide a lot of things behind spirituality. Um, and, and I know that some of you may not agree with this, uh, but, but, but if you just bear with me, I believe that there's some truth to this. Um, oftentimes, especially in uh, the African-American church, um, because of some of the things that we have experienced, you know, when we were all younger, our parents said, what goes on in this house Amen. Don't, don't talk to anybody about it. Amen. Experience. Act like it didn't happen. Man, and for some of us, uh, that can mess you up. Uh, you know, things happen in life, and we try to pretend as if it never happened. Uh, there have been moments in time where we have been emotionally uh, abused or, or, or physically abused or, or something has happened, some trauma has happened in our lives and we pretend that nothing has happened. Give me more on the monitor, if you will, Brother Jerry. Amen. And, and uh, uh, as we go through life, as we go through all that life has to bring to us, amen, uh, uh, it's important to understand uh, that anxiety will happen. And I want to talk to you a little bit about anxiety because anxiety is one of the most profound uh, things that most people uh, experience out of all mental disorders. Uh, and and uh, anxiety shows her way, herself in many different areas, in three specifically. Number one, panic attacks. Uh, number two, uh, post-traumatic stress disorders, uh, and number three, obs uh, obsessive compulsive disorders. Uh, it is very interesting because uh, uh, most of the time we can hide behind the emotional. We can pretend as if nothing is going on. And when you get people who come into worship together, that's why spiritual discernment is so important. Uh, because we've got to know what's of God and what isn't God. We've got to know when a person is authentically worshiping God or fighting with some sort of demonic force that has a form of godliness. Everything jerking ain't Jesus. They ain't going to like this this morning, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Everything running is not God. I'm going to go real deep on you. Everything speaking in tongues is not Jesus. That's why the word of God, amen, puts this distinction and says you will know them by the fruit that they bear. Come to encourage you on this morning because, amen, uh, uh, tragedies will happen in life. And our response to tragedy is important. Amen. Uh, it is not for us to pretend as if nothing has
has happened, nothing is going on, there has not been some traumatic issue that has happened in our lives. Man, but we've got to acknowledge it. And we've got to deal with it. And we've got to pray about it. And we have to fast about it. And we may have to talk to a counselor about it. Hello, lights. Now, I know some of y'all rolling your eyes and saying, Brother Preacher, get this psychology stuff out of here. We want to talk. Amen. Give us scriptures. And, 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 and we will do that. But I want you to understand that you can be in church and be emotionally messed up. Over the past 18 months, the Bonner Group has reported that 68% of churchgoers have admitted that they have been dealing with some level of anxiety. Man, level of anxieties. And many of those anxieties have taken them to the emergency room. I, 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 I want to go over a few of these anxieties and then we're going to get to the scripture. But I want you to hear this. Uh, uh, panic attacks have become so common. Men and panic attacks will make you uh, uh, think uh, that uh, you are, are, are going through certain things. Panic attacks can uh, be very frightening to an individual. A real panic attack, when you have a panic attack, most people think that they're having a heart attack because it mimics Amen. The tightness of the chest. It mimics all of those things. Amen. It mimics a, a loss of breath. Man, and all of these things are happening in the body, in the mind, that makes one think that they're losing control. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder is when uh, there has been something that has happened in your life, man, that triggers you. And every time you get into a certain situation, it triggers something in your life. It triggers, amen, uh, you know, it's like uh, uh, those who were in a car accident and now they're afraid to drive. It's post-traumatic stress disorder. Or perhaps uh, you saw somebody die in front of you uh, 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 and, and, and now you're afraid to go to hospitals. All of those things uh, uh, shape our lives. It shapes our thinking. It shapes us. And if we're not careful, uh, we will pretend just to be spiritual and not really deal with the issues at hand. Man, uh, you also have obsessive uh, compulsive disorder, which makes a person just continue to do and continue to do and continue to do and do the same thing over and over and over again because they think by doing the same thing over and over again, things will get better. It's all of those things that are, that are channeled to us that gives us this stress. Man, and even though I've had a uh, numerous conversations with people, uh, uh, many people uh, 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 are struggling on the inside. Uh, Billy Graham said something that I thought was quite interesting. He said, it is uh, uh, anxiety at its best, distracts us from our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and at its worst, anxiety cripple is a crippling disease that takes over one's mind and thoughts and puts them in a dark place. Man, puts you in a dark place. And I know, I know uh, that, that, that some people say, well, you know, uh, 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 well, Brother Preacher, that, 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 that doesn't mean anything. Just pray harder and it'll go away. Yes, that does help. But sometimes people can be challenged and still not go anywhere. They're still wrestling on the inside. Brings us to our scripture text. Amen. In Philippians chapter number four, the Apostle Paul, who is the writer of this book is uh, the apostle who writes this, and Paul writes this book from a Roman prison. He writes this as a man uh, being captive in a Roman prison. And although he is captive in this Roman prison, he wants to still do a number of things. This, this text was believed to be written around uh, uh, 49 AD where the Apostle Paul is now writing uh, to the church at Philippi. Man, this church was a church that uh, you'll see that the Apostle Paul had started 
and you'll read more about this church in Acts chapter number 19. And although the Apostle Paul is now uh, who we see as a great insp uh, 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 inspirer, has done great things for the Lord Jesus Christ, but the Apostle Paul finds himself in prison for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not for doing anything wrong, but for just simply preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to share with you today uh, that there's things that happen in our lives uh, that can cause tremendous trauma, trauma cause anxiety, amen, and we can be singing, we can be rejoicing, we can be doing tons of things and not, amen, ever realize that we are going through some sort of traumatic disorder. Well, it is uh, Ephroditus, uh, who is a leader of this church at Philippi, who the saints find out that the Apostle Paul is in prison, so they send one of the leaders, amen, Ephroditus, amen, to find out what's going on with Pastor Paul. It's important to check in on people uh, when they're going through. Uh, because the number one thing that the enemy uses as his tool when people are going through is he wants you to feel like you're all alone. Uh, and, and what I would, even I would even suggest that the enemy will even try to create something in your life where you uh, uh, find yourself uh, in a place uh, where you don't want to be bothered with people. Not wanting to be bothered with people is the polar opposite of what the scriptures teach. We are the body of Christ. We need one another. I know we try to act like we're big and bad, and I know we sing songs like, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need anyone else, uh, but I don't have that testimony. <laughs> I need folks. Hey, man, I need, I need missionary Janice Johnson. I need Elder Dickerson. I need uh, Minister Linton. I, I, I need people because God uses people to bless people. Man, I know that we don't like to talk about that, but, 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 but put your mask on, don't touch anybody, but just look over at somebody and let them know, I need you. I need you. I need you. That's why I'm in church, because I need you. I need the Lord, but I need you too. Man, David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is high in the die. We know that God is the rock, but David says, lead me. That requires somebody else must be in the picture to take me to God. Y'all didn't hear that. There, there, there is, I need you, I need you. And that's, that's one of the benefits of belonging to a wonderful church like this because I can't tell you in the most darkest moments of my life, I praise and thank God for the saints. When my sister died, amen, we live all the way out in Jersey, but there wasn't a day that the saints didn't come out there and feed us and comfort us. And I thought to myself, these folks, amen, are so persistent, Lord, but they wanted to be a blessing to us. Amen. That's why it's nice to be nice, because we need each other. And so they sent Aphrodite. They said, go and check on Pastor Paul. We know that he is the apostle. We know that he's got many other churches. We know uh, that he's done a great work. But Paul is in a bad state. Amen. We don't know what the situation is, but we want you to go and check on him. Aphrodite goes and travels 800 miles. Not in a Tesla. Not in a private jet. Not uh, 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 on the Amtrak. Not even on the Greyhound, but on foot. He travels 800 miles to go and see about Pastor Paul. Man, he realizes the importance of, of uh, him going to check on them. And the leaders of the church said, now we want you to do three things. We want to make sure that he knows, number one, that he is loved. You know, it's important to tell people that you love them. And before they die. We want to say great things when people die. 
but give me my flowers while I can smell them. Don't tell me how much you appreciate me when I'm laying in my grave, but tell me now how much you appreciate me. Man, and so he wants, they, they want the Apostle Paul to know that they love him. They know that he's in a tough spot, but you are loved. Do you know how many people around you just simply need to know that they're loved? Do you know how many people have been tied up in their homes by themselves for months and months and months, and many of our seniors, many of our people have outlived all of their family members, and they're living this life by themselves? And while we have Thanksgiving meals and amen and invite all of our family members over and not realize that some of our brothers and sisters are spending moments uh, that are made for families by themselves. Whether or not you believe it or not, that can play on the mind. I'm preaching hard whether y'all realize it or not. It, it, can, it can play on the mind. It can, uh, it can play on the emotions. It can play on the spirit. Amen. And what the devil tapped into that, man, because the devil knows how to make things much, much worse. You don't believe me? Get a stomach ache. And the devil will talk to you about everything that you've got when it's nothing but gas. Yeah, I said gas, get over it. <laughs> but you know how it is. The devil will tell you, oh, no, that's something. Yeah, yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about, or is it just? The devil knows how to play on our emotions. He plays on everything, and he messes with our minds, especially when you're by yourself. That's why we need the fellowship of the saints because we need something to counter all that the enemy has been saying to us all week long. That's why we need a fellowship like this so that we can defeat the enemy. And when you come to church, you need a word. And when you come to church, you need to hear the praise team at its best because there's so many things that we're fighting all week long. Let me move on. The Apostle Paul, amen. He wants them to know that they love, they bring them a financial gift. Amen. But they also want to update him on what's going on in the church. And so the Apostle Paul, they tell Ephroditus, you stay with the Apostle Paul until things get better. The Apostle Paul said, no, Ephroditus, go back. And I want you to take these words back to the saints. Amen. Who are there? Man, and what we see is one of the things that the Apostle Paul points out in this book is this is a book where the Apostle Paul uses two words uh, that, that, that are connected to each other. The word joy is seen 16 times in this book. It says joy, amen, the importance of having the joy of the Lord. Not only joy, but the word rejoice. Those two words he uses, amen, interchangeably throughout this book. And in this fourth chapter, he says in verse number four, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. You want to know how to get free from anxiety? Rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. Uh, and again, I say rejoice. Keep your, the joy of the Lord in your life. And I know that you don't, may not believe it, but you cannot be depressed and full of the joy of the Lord at the same time. One of those things have got to flee. <laughs> I remember we used to sing a song years ago. We don't sing, any, sing it anymore. Uh, but one of the pieces of the song used to say, if you don't have any joy, leap for it. You, sometimes you've got to just do something unusual to get something unusual from God. And the enemy has been trying to depress and put anxiety in the life of his believers. But today, I have a word from the Lord. If you want to get out of a spirit of depression, find the joy of the Lord in your life. That's why we say, the more I praise him, the better I feel. Shine on my heart. Oh, glory be to God. I said the more I praise him, the better I feel. And the better I feel, the more I praise him. 
Sister Lisa, David had it right. That's why he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise. I said, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You, that's why when we come to church, it's important that we have a place like we currently have, amen, where the praises of the Lord is at free realm. Glory be to God for us to be able to magnify him and lift him up because there's something that happens in the life of the believer when we praise God. That's why Brother Ernest was trying to explain to you earlier, although some of you missed it, uh, that, that you just can't sit in the moment where the praise of the Lord is going up because you don't feel like praising him. Show me any place in the scriptures where the Bible tells you praise him when you feel like praising him. You won't see it. But what the Bible does says, let everything. It's a command. Whew. It says, let everything. that have breath. Praise the Lord. And for those of you who think that that limits you to the Holy Spirit, it doesn't limit you to the Holy Spirit. Sinners can praise the Lord. The only requirement is for you to have breath. That's why some of y'all are tripping out because some of these uh, rappers or some of these other artists are coming up with gospel artists, uh, gospel albums, and you're getting upset because they're coming out with gospel artists, uh, albums, if you will. But the Bible says, let everything, everything in the earth, let it praise the Lord. Now, worship is different. Because the Bible says, and they that worship him <laughs> must worship him in spirit and in truth. That means relationship. So I got to move on. I'm running out of time. He says, let everything, amen. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The New Living Translation says it like this. Uh, also be full of joy of the Lord. And I say unto you again, rejoice. Be full of the Lord. Be full of the joy of the Lord. And some of you right now are praising God on half empty. But it's dangerous trying to serve God half empty. Because where there's half emptiness, that means there's an opportunity for something else to be full or filled in you. But when you're full of the Holy Ghost, come on here somebody. You don't have room for anything else. I don't have room for gossiping. I don't have room uh, uh, for the backbiting. I don't have room for anything else because I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Let your moderations be known unto God, uh, unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Uh, that means that simply we should live for God. Uh, the New Living Translation says it like this: Let everyone see that you are uh, uh, that you are uh, considered uh, in. Uh, all the way in God. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. In other words, I live every day of my life for the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of you right now are dealing with anxiety. It's not because the enemy creeped in, because you opened the door and let the enemy in. Hello, lights. They ain't going to like it now, Mother Khalil. Yes, Lord. You cannot play with the devil and think that the devil plays fairly. Some of you got a broken heart right now and feeling uh, a post-traumatic stress disorder because you linked up with somebody that God didn't tell you to link up with. Some of you are messed up right now because uh, uh, you saying, oh, well, I, 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 I loved him. I, 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 I gave everything to him. That's the problem. You gave him everything. I'm going to leave that alone because y'all ain't going ain't gonna to like that part. But I've come to tell you, you can't play with the enemy. Because the devil doesn't play fairly. 
He, 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 the Bible says that his will is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Verse number six, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything through prayer. Let's just deal with that. Man, it says be careful for nothing. In other words, that, that word careful just means simply uh, don't have anxiety about anything. Reason, man, I can be free from anxiety is because I learned how to pray. And some of you are not praying like you should. That's why you're depressed. Some of you are, 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 are not talking to God on a regular basis in communication with him on a regular basis. And that's why you feel that heaviness in you. You feel heavy because, because uh, 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 you're not praying as you should. But I don't know about you, uh, but there have been times in my life where I have prayed, uh, I have felt heavy, and I get on my knees and pray, and as I'm praying, I feel that spirit of heaviness get up off of me. There's no way in the world that you can be heavy in the presence of God. You don't believe me? Well, the Bible says it like this, in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. How can you be heavy and have joy at the same time? Y'all ain't hearing me today. <laughs> Something's got to go. I know it's not good English, but it sure sounds good. Something has to leave. Man, I'm going to pray. I'm going to take it to God. Some of you are depressed right now because you're trying to carry something that was never meant for you to carry. Some of you are having anxiety right now, can't sleep at night. You got to take pills to go to sleep. Got to get coffee to wake up. Got to uh, go de uh, deal with this, deal with that because you've been dealing with so much that you've not given to God. That's why the scripture says, cast all your care. Upon him. The reason you can do it is because he cares for you. I know y'all want me to rush. I'm almost finished. Woo. He says, hey man, uh, pray. Listen what the uh, New Living Translation, uh, translation says. It, it, it says, uh, instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him uh, because it's already done or like it's already done. Do you know a part of your prayer life after you finish, amen, uh, asking God for what you've asked God for, you should spend some time thanking God that it's already done. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you because you've already done it. I thank you, God, because you've answered my prayer. Your word declares in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you for healing my son. Lord, I thank you for delivering my daughter. Lord, I thank you for giving me that job. Lord, I thank you for releasing that heaviness. Lord, I thank you because you've been good to me. Lord, you've been better to me than I've been to myself. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I know I'm heavy, but Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that I didn't die. Lord, I thank you that I'm still here. Lord, I thank you. Somebody yell out, Lord, I thank you. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. In other words, tell God everything. Tell God all about it. Tell God, amen, what you need. That's how you get free. And let me tell you, uh, verse number seven, the apostle Paul helps us, amen, to tell us how God answers our prayer. Look at verse number seven. Verse number seven says it like this, and the peace of God, this is what God does. Now, after you've prayed, after you've talked to God, after you've had communication with him, verse number seven, let's read it together so we can get the victory together. Come on, y'all got it? Get your Bibles. Y'all still bring Bibles? You still have Bibles, a phone or something? 
Let's read it together. Let's read it now. And the peace of God, which passes all, shall keep your heart, your mind, through Christ Jesus. This is what God does. After you pray, here comes the peace of God. <laughs> I said, here comes the peace of God. Have you ever gone through chaos and everybody's bugging out, everybody's going crazy, but you've got peace? You sometimes even are trying to figure it out yourself. How in the world can all hell be breaking loose? Amen. And God still give you peace? He said it's the peace of God. Sister Barbara, he said it's not only just the peace of God, but he said that surpasses all understanding. Are you listening to me, church? Means that people are going to look at you like you've lost your mind. Because you should be in an insane asylum. You should have cracked up somewhere. Woo. You should have died in the middle of it. But God has given you peace. I'm trying to calm my preacher down, but I sure want to holler right about now. And the peace of God. And the peace of God. Come here, Sheila. Come here for a second. God says it like this. And the peace of God. That surpasses all understanding. That's why the, the, the songwriter said, and he walks with me. <laughs> and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. <laughs> yes, Lord. Have a joy that we share. As we tarry there, none other has ever known. I've come to tell you today that you can have peace in the middle of chaos. You can have peace when they give you a pink slip. You can have peace with your son on crack. You can have peace with your daughter as a prostitute. How? Because his peace surpasses all understanding. I dare somebody to yell out peace. peace. Oh, yes, Lord, peace. I got peace in the midst of the storm, Dickerson. Hey, Amen. I should have lost my mind, but I got peace. I should have been dead, but I got peace. When my husband died, I should have lost it, but I got peace. Ah, oh, yes, Lord. And folks are trying to figure out how in the world can you still be alive? I guess Brother Ernest said it right. He said, I'm alive <laughs> because there's more. You should have been, hallelujah, in a menstrual institution in an I love me jacket. But look at God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, look at God. It was no goodness of your own. <laughs> That's why the Bible, amen, tells us it is of the Lord's mercies. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That we are not consumed because his compassions, I thank God for his compassion. I should have been dead but he's a compassionate God. <laughs> uh, yes, Lord. I shouldn't be here today, but he's a compassionate God. 
I should be uh, somewhere, hallelujah, uh, uh, in, uh, with three coats on, walking down, asking for money. But God was compassionate. His compassion fell not. They are new every morning. What that means is every morning that I get up, God's got something for me. And I'll be, hallelujah, like my daughter, amen, is every morning. She runs up to me every, every morning and she asks me, Daddy, what you got for me? Now you just got out of bed. What do you mean what I have for you? In other words, she wants to know what's for breakfast. What do I have for her? And that's what you've got to do when you get up in the morning. Say, Lord, I thank you. But Daddy, what do you have for me? And God said, I'll give you peace of mind. I'll keep your mind in perfect peace. I won't let your enemies destroy you. I won't let them knock you down. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And I've come to talk to somebody on this uh, Sunday morning that the devil has been trying to destroy you. The spirit of anxiety has been trying to kill you. And the devil has been talking to you. And you can be in a crowd of folks and feel like you're losing it all. And nobody understands you. But God, can somebody help me preach? Can somebody rear your head back and say, God, somebody preach with me and say, God, God is going to turn it around. Everything that the enemy meant for evil, God is meaning it for your good. I don't know who you are, but somebody's dealing with anxiety. God said, if you turn around one time, let the devil know I'm turning it around. Come on, turn around. Let the devil know I'm turning it around. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Gonna let it show. I'm coming out. 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 All right. I got about five or six more minutes. Sit down. Let me finish this. Woo. I don't know who it is, but I feel deliverance walking through here right now. You got the Holy Ghost, but you still need to be delivered. I don't know who it is, but the Holy Ghost, I feel it, I see it. It's going from pew to pew. It's tearing down foul ground. It's breaking up some things. It's destroying something. I feel deliverance. 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 So, stop with the anxiety. Well, you don't understand. I'm nervous because I may lose my job. Have God ever let you stop? You can say like David, I once was young. I feel this thing in my spirit. But now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Honey, you can take your little ugly job. God's got a cow on a thousand hills. And the same God that gave me this job will give me another job. I'm not afraid of anything. Because the Lord shall supply all of my needs.
You're not going to threaten me with this job. Because the same God that gave me this job will give me another one. All right. I got to leave that alone. I'm running out of time. So we covered two things. Sit down. And I'm done. We covered two things, Sister Lisa. The first thing that we covered, amen, is what we need to do to get free. The next thing we covered was what God will do to free you. And now we're going to cover what you must do to stay free. Are you ready? Well, in verse number eight, it says it like this. Once you're free, Come on, let's read it. You got your Bibles? Come on, get your Bibles. Don't put them out. Get your Bibles. Verse number eight. The reason I want you to read it is so when you get home and the devil tries to threaten your mind, you know how to put him in place. You ready? Verse number eight. Read. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, stop right there. Stop believing the devil's lies. You know, the devil has been lying to you. The Bible says it like this. He's not just a liar, but the Bible says that he's the father of lies. The first lie was told by the devil himself. When he said that I could exalt myself above God, he told the first lie. Stop believing the devil's lies. Only focus on the truth. What is the truth? If God be for me, who can be against me? If, 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 stop focusing on the truth. No weapon that is formed against me will prosper. That's the truth. Stop believing the devil's lies. Read on. Whatsoever things are what? Whatsoever things are honest. Let me tell you something. I don't care what other folks are doing to get ahead. Focus on what's honest. You cannot enter into the holy place of God with dirty hands and a dirty heart. You got to have clean hands and a pure heart. If you keep your hands clean and your heart pure, God will give you your heart's desire according to his will. Let them lie. Let them cheat. Let them mistreat you. You be honest. You do the right thing. Who cares if they're running around talking about you? Let them talk. You do the right thing. Read on. Whatsoever things are just. Right, true. Move on. Read on. Whatever thing is pure. In other words, stop consuming mess. Some of y'all right now can't get free because you're entertaining too much foolishness. Stop allowing people to call your phone with garbage. It's messing you up. You can be on the mountaintop and somebody call your phone with nonsense and next thing you're depressed, you're sad, you're heavy. For some of you of social media, you can't look at all that Snapchat and, and chat snap and, and, and Facebook. Hello. Tick tock tock tick. You watching all that foolishness that gets in your spirit. Am I helping somebody? He said whatever things are pure. Hey Amen. You got to think on anything. You're going to have to change your thinking. Read on. Whatsoever things are lovely. I want to be around the lovely things. Take a walk in the park and look at the flowers. Go to a restaurant and treat yourself out for something to eat. Somebody said, well, I look foolish going out by myself. I don't have no man. You got a man. <laughs> you got the best man in town. Would you look at somebody, some of these women in here say, I got a man. That's right. 
I got a man. I got to go. My time is up. I got a man. Last money paid my rent. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me. I said last money paid my rent. <laughs> He's so bad he even prepared a table. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. In the presence <laughs> of my enemies. I got a man, honey. When I came in, he's still opening doors for me. That rod outside, he gave me that. He protects me. He won't let any harm come near me. He's even jealous, y'all. Look at somebody and say, I got a man. I'm done. I, oh. I've come to tell you today that some of you right now needs the joy of the Lord in your life. The joy of the Lord that destroys everything, that breaks up everything. Listen to the word of God in Psalms 20, uh, 55 and 22. It says, cast all your burdens upon the Lord, amen, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved quoted this before, 1 Peter chapter number uh, 5, verse number 7. It says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. The, uh, the English Living uh, Translation says, cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Matthew 11, chapter number 28 says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'm done. But I want you to know this morning that God has a deliverance for you. This is not a moment to shout it away. This is not a moment to dance it away. This is a moment for you to get the authentic joy of the Lord in your life that will fill your cup up and let it overflow. How, how can I live in the peace of God? I can live in the peace of God, man, because I trust in God. The words of the song, I trust in God, says I trust in God. Wherever I may be, upon the land or on the rolling sea. For come what may from day to day, my heavenly father watches over me. I trust in God. He cares for me on mountains bleak or on the stormy seas. Though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly father watches over me. Listen to this. He makes the rose an object of his care. He guides the eagles through the pathless air. And surely he, he remembers me, y'all. <laughs> My heavenly father watches over me. Stand to your feet if you will. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. I trust in God. I trust in God. There you go. Thank you, sir. I know. Come on, would you lift your hands and say that with me? Come on, I trust in God. I trust. Listen to me as you're standing. Some of you have been dealing with a heavy spirit that's been riding on you. And for some of you, this message may not have meant anything. But some of you, without this message, you would have lost your mind. You were so depressed, you were going to go home and just live in the spirit of depression. But right now, God is lifting that heavy burden off of you right now. The Holy Ghost is sweeping the room. 
the Holy Ghost is in the atmosphere and I really do believe if you would just simply begin to worship him shame on God is shifting the atmosphere to change your mind to change your heart to change your situation let him shift you now come on come on come on just worship him rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice come on come on come on come on come on would you worship him would you worship him till you feel something move? Will you worship him till you feel something shake? Will you worship him until you feel some of you are so messed up that you don't know how you're going to make it? Would you worship him now? Oh, Listen. 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 There's somebody that cannot leave the way you came. You're standing there saying, Bishop, my home, my family is so messed up that I can't sleep at night. I'm depressed. I wake up in the middle of the night. I'm all mixed up. I don't know if I'm coming or going. I need you to do something. I know you don't want people in your business. But the only way to defeat the enemy is to let him know that I'm not afraid of you. I want you to leave from where you are and make your way to this altar. Leave. Leave from where you are. Make your way to this altar. Declare war on the devil and let him know not another day. Come on, sir. Don't, be, don't wait for anybody else. Jump in the water while it's trouble. Come. Spread out. Stay. Remain spread out. 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 Shine up, us. Oh, yes. I know we've got to go. Now, listen. You won't leave here like you came, like you came. in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Hey. Listen, this sister right here with that gray sweater, God sent you here. This message was for you today. Listen to me. The devil has been trying to choke the life out of you. Shaitan my heart. And he's had you so depressed that you felt like you weren't going to make it another day. But God wants you to know that freedom is here for you today. Come down here where I am, baby. I said freedom is here for you today. Stand at the edge of the altar. The only way to defeat the enemy is to have a full cup. David said, he anointed my head with oil. Oh, be delivered. Oh, Oh, be free. Be free. Oh, you won't leave here like you can in Jesus' Oh, the power of the Lord. 
going home. Everybody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Listen, yeah. I want you to hear this. Hallelujah. If you are here today or you've been watching and you're still wrestling with the spirit of anxiety and it's been, you need somebody to talk to, I want you to call the Cool JC counseling line. There is a counseling line that the church of our Lord Jesus Christ has. You can certainly call Bishop Wright, you can certainly call myself, or you can call the Cool JC counseling line. That number is 888-455-6255. Again, 888-455-6255. Sometimes you just need somebody to talk to. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. 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 Along with your deliverance, sometimes you need someone to talk to. You can call that number. For those of you who are viewing us, it's on the screen now. God bless you. Father, we thank you now and we glorify you as we leave this place but never from your presence. God, we thank you for the freedom that we have in you. Lord, that everything is going to be all right. Lord, we give it to you. Every fear, every anxiety, every heartache, we give it to you now and we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. I dare somebody yell out, I'm free. I'm free in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Go in peace. To be a sanctuary. To be a sanctuary.